What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up and get RPCS3 up and running on your Windows PC. This is a legitimate PlayStation 3 emulator. It's still in the early phases, but there are some games that work flawlessly. Now before you get started, you need to note that it does take a pretty decent PC to run this. Now, even for me, I have an i7-4790K at 4 gigahertz. I've actually tried this at 4 gigahertz and 4.5. I still lag with some games. I also have the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1066 gigabyte, so your results may vary depending on your system. I'm rocking 16 gigabytes of DDR3. It's at 2400 megahertz. So a newer system might run this a little better if you have a higher overclock or even a better CPU than this. This one's a bit old, but it works for me. This is a real PS3 emulator. This is RPCS3. We're gonna go ahead and get it started. I'm running Windows 10 Pro 64-bit edition. We're gonna go to download and we're gonna download the latest build. As of making this video, it's 0 0.0.56649. Just go ahead and download it. Shouldn't take too long. It's 15 megs. Next thing we're gonna need is the PS3 firmware update. 4.82, as of making this video, we'll just click download here. It's gonna download it for us. This is 220 megabytes, so it might take a little bit to download. Just be patient, when everything's finished up, we'll get this up and running. While we're waiting for that, there is something else you're gonna need, PS3 games. Now you can rip them with a specific Blu-ray player. If we head back over to the RPCS3 website, there is a quick start guide, there's a roadmap, there's a compatibility list. So my PS3 games are located on an external drive in a folder called PS3. I can't tell you where to get them. You can rip them yourself with a specific Blu-ray player or you can search Google. Now some of them may be named correctly like God of War 3 here. I have Persona 5, I have Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix. These are other games. I have Tekken 6, Demon Souls, Persona 5, and you really can't tell what it is until we load it up into the RPCS3 emulator. I think everything's done downloading. First thing we're gonna do is extract the RPCS3 emulator here. I'm just gonna use 7-zip. And we're gonna launch it, rpcs3.exe. Every time you open it up, you'll get this message. Read through the quick start guide. There's an FAQ, there's forums, and a Discord. If you're having major issues, ask on the forum or Discord. I've already read this, so I have read the quick start guide. I don't want it to show up again when I launch this. First thing we need to do is load our firmware. We're gonna go to File, Install Firmware. Mine's right here, it's ps3update.pup. Just double click, it's gonna install it for us. Don't show again, click OK. It's gonna compile the PPU modules. This could take a second depending on the speed of your CPU. Okay, so my firmware is successfully installed. Now we need to get our games in here. I'm gonna close down RPCS3. I'm gonna snap the folder over here to the left-hand side, and I'm gonna find my PS3 games. So I have all mine in a folder called PS3. We need to place them inside of the emulator directory under dev underscore HDD zero. From here, we'll go to disk. Now I'm just gonna take all of these inside of their respected folder, throw them over here. Now when we launch, RPCS3, they'll show up in the list. So I have Catherine, Demon Souls, God of War Collection Volume 2, God of War 3, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5, Persona 5, and Tekken 6. I'm gonna maximize this. Now we need to set our controller up. I'm using an Xbox One controller. Go to Configuration, Pads. Player One, I'm gonna be using X input because I'm using the Xbox controller. You can use a keyboard, DualShock 4, X input, or MM joystick. We're gonna go to configure. Now they did a really good job because my controller's already set up. Right out of the box, as soon as I choose X input, it's ready to go. But if you need to map your controller, just click on the respected button and press it on your controller. Click save and okay. So that's it, our controller is now set up. 
There are some other configurations we can change. We'll go to Configuration, CPU. Some games will require you to mess around with these settings a little bit. There's nothing I need to change in CPU. It's already set up the way I need it. GPU is pretty important with this emulator. Renderer, OpenGL, or Vulkan. I find that Vulkan works better on some games, and some games OpenGL works a little better. I'm gonna go with Vulkan here. Now there's one game I know of that requires right color buffers. We need to check this, and that's Demon Souls. If you don't check that, you usually get a black screen, especially when running in Vulkan mode. Default resolution, it's set to the recommended 1280 by 720. Going any higher will stress your system out a little bit. Resolution scale, set to 100. Resolution scale, threshold, 16 by 16. You can go up from here. I'm just gonna go to 16 by 16. Aspect ratio 6.9, frame limit off. There's a few other settings in here. I use Vulkan, I turn right color buffers on. Audio, X Audio 2 works fine for my system. IO, system, network, emulator. Not much needs to be changed in these five options here. GPU is really important. Make sure you have your GPU chosen. Click save, and we can now start a game. I'm gonna go with Demon Souls. I'm just gonna double click. It's gonna to have to compile the PPU modules for each game. This one has 91, so it could take a little while. It's doing eight PPU modules at one time because I have eight threads on my CPU. It'll only do this one time per game. Some games only have 10 PPU modules that need to be compiled, but as long as you leave everything in the same directory, you won't have to do this again once you launch the game one time. I'm gonna fast forward this because it could take a second. When the modules are finished compiling, your game will start. So this emulator is really reliant on shaders. It needs to compile the shaders while you play the game in order for it to run smooth. The first time you run through a level, you will notice some stuttering. I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm gonna compile my shaders by playing the first level. You do have the FPS listed in the top left-hand corner. You have your rendering mode, the version of the emulator we're using, and the name of the game. You can go full screen. I'm just gonna do full screen windowed here, just so we can see that FPS. If you need to input any text, just use your computer's keyboard. King Aland the Twelfth. When it's caching or compiling the shaders, you will see a little dialogue in the bottom left hand corner. It'll say compiling shaders. So when I start a game for the first time, I usually move the camera around a lot, walk around, just kind of weird. I want to get all these shaders compiled. You'll notice some stuttering the first playthrough. kind of look around a little bit. I want to get everything in the camera view that I can. And this is actually working a lot better than I thought it would. I thought it would be stuttering a lot more than this. On some other systems that I've tested, it's almost unplayable until you restart the game. Mine's running at almost a constant 30 FPS. We do get some dips into the 28, but if you're not looking at that FPS, you really won't notice it. It's a pretty awesome emulator, and it's come a long way since it's come out. It's pretty young. So over time, I believe they'll be able to emulate most PS3 games perfectly. I'm gonna start another game real quick just to show you that stuttering that I was talking about. We're 
just gonna exit this game. And I'm gonna start up another game. When I start up Tekken 6, it's gonna have to load the PPU modules. There's only 27 in this game, so it shouldn't take as long as it did with Demon Souls. This game says playable over here, but it really struggles on my system. If you hear that audio there. This game should be at 60 FPS, but we're dipping down to... I've even seen it go as low as 14 here. And the audio is horrible, as you can hear. Get ready for the next battle. I believe most of the slowdown is the shaders compiling. Lower left hand corner, you'll see it. So after I get these compiled, if I restart this game, it might run a little smoother. I don't think it's gonna run at full speed, but you never know. Let me fight her a little bit. play the first round and hopefully the shaders from the level and the character will be compiled. I'm just going to move around this map as much as possible. Round one. Fight. Okay, so let's see how it works now. Keep an eye on that FPS up there. After the shaders have compiled, it's running pretty decent. We're not at a steady 60 FPS, but it's playable. And this is only gonna get better over time, like I mentioned. This is a newer emulator, so they'll find a better way to cache these shaders. Yeah, it's definitely much better. Get some dips here and there. Overall, it's not that bad. Nice. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. It's fairly simple to set up. I've had a few people ask me to do a tutorial video on it. Your main thing is getting your games. If you rip them yourself, you will need a specific Blu-ray player. All the information you'll ever need is on their website. Go ahead and read through their quick start guide. Check their forums. They also have an FAQ. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. And like always, Thanks for watching.